Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Robertson bringing you a video that's half a channel update and half a showcase for a creation made for the game Stormworks Build and Rescue. The vessel that's featured in today's video, not the rib I'm using right now, but the one that's just beyond it, is the Condor Mark I by the talented content creator named Spider. Although this one has been slightly modified and is for personal use only, but I thought I'd showcase it anyway just to let people know what is possible just from editing something yourself using the in-game workbench. For those of you looking for news regarding my Space Engineers Return to Earth series, don't worry, it's not been abandoned, progress has just been very, very slow. Due to both an increase in my workload, that's right folks, some of us have real lives and actual jobs, and also due to some particularly annoying bugs in Space Engineers that have popped up since the most wanted update earlier this year. Mainly the looping sound bug, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, and the replay tool character switch issue, both of which have resulted in me only being able to make use of around 10 to 15 minutes worth of footage despite having recorded several hours in the actual game. Sadly, a lot of this has been caused by the excessive amount of re-recording and editing I've had to do to try and get rid of, or at least minimise the effects of the looping sound bug, which, while more prevalent in realistic sound mode, is still occurring even when using the arcade sound mode via the menu. As you can imagine, this is very frustrating to work with, and while it's only a minor nuisance when using loudspeakers, it's very obvious when listening to the footage using headphones, and as you would imagine, would drive anyone that's not actually playing the game, but watching it instead, absolutely nuts. Especially if it's the refinery sound effects that are looping. <laughs> The good news is that these issues have been reported on the bug report forums and there's even been an absolute shit ton of upvotes and comments asking for it to be fixed, as many players, not surprisingly, consider it immersion breaking. But unfortunately, despite the devs saying that they are aware of it and that a fix was due to come out soon, it has now been over two months and there's still no sign of it being patched out. But fear not, I shall persevere and just record and edit as much as I can and try to get the next episode out to you guys as soon as I'm able. Hopefully with little to no audio glitches, at least obvious ones anyway. Anyway, enough about Space Engineers, let's proceed with the showcase. First off, as you can see, I've updated the bridge or pilot house in the Condor. What I've done is essentially add a lot of the display screens and microcontrollers from Spider's Puma Mark III and the OSV Fathom to the Condor, including the new HUD, moving map display, and even a more contemporary radar display that ditches the deprecated radar from the old version of Stormworks. This new radar display has touchscreen controls that allow you to change the radar range and even the mode so that it switches to a 360 horizontal display if required. Staying true to the original, I've left the main water cannon alone and will probably switch it out for a real working gun later on, but what I have done is add Zizo's emergency beacon locator to the top left, which I'll turn on for the moment and let it do its thing while the ship is moving. That way it should get the approximate location of the emergency beacon we've just detected. What I will do is mute the buzzer though, as that will get annoying pretty quickly. Using the exterior view right now, I'll try and pan the camera down under the waterline where you can take a quick look at the water jets that I've used to replace the old propellers or screws of the original. They're a lot more expensive in career mode, but they certainly do have their advantages, which I'll show you all in just a moment once I move us out of the harbour. It's also worth mentioning that I've replaced all the old deprecated gearboxes with the new ones and even added a whole new engine management microcontroller. So the Condor is now a lot more fuel efficient than it was previously with only a tiny amount of loss in overall top speed as a result. Once we're clear of the dock, I'll push the throttle up to max and bring the Condor up to a very respectable 30 knots, which for a vessel of this size is nothing to complain about. More so as this creation doesn't take advantage of any XML edited blocks, glitches or exploits in order to blaze across the ocean like a souped up hydrofoil or low flying jet plane. As you can see, the water jets not only make this vessel more responsive, but also a lot more manoeuvrable than before, which is always a good thing when a whirlpool, tsunami, or something even worse suddenly appears when you least expect it. 
<laughs> Just as well that helicopter up there is tied down. Although in retrospect, maybe I should have locked it in place before manoeuvring like that. Anyway, that's enough high speed shenanigans for now. Time to get the autopilot, sorry, autopilot to take over and I'll show you another feature I've added to this thing. While burning around at 30 knots is all well and good if you need to get somewhere close by fairly quickly, it'll burn through your fuel pretty fast, despite the changes I've made. So what I've done is add an endurance or cruise mode toggle button to the dashboard right here. This is an idea that I pretty much stole from a hobo named Walt, which will not only reduce the RPM of your engines, but it will also change gear so that the ship is running a lot more efficiently, albeit at a slower speed. There, the RPM has halved and we're now cruising along at around 21 to 22 knots, but look at how much the estimated range and fuel timer has increased by. While we could have managed a one-way trip to the Arctic before, this will now be more than enough for several round trips there and back again. Now, there's probably some of you complaining that this is too slow. Indeed, I actually responded to someone on the Steam Workshop, whose name escapes me right now and I suspect may have actually been a kid or a teenager, that complained that the Condor going even 30 to 40 knots was too slow. But this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, in real life, 30 knots is considered to be quite fast. Hell, even 22 knots is quite respectable for a vessel of this size. And in order to give you guys some perspective on how fast it is, I'm going to take the helicopter out for a quick spin and let you see how fast the Condor passes it while it's hovering just off the bow, even while it's only going 22 knots. The eagle-eyed among you may have recognised this helicopter and realised that it doesn't come with the original ship. That's true. This is a slightly modified version of the Magpie by Mr. Earth that I've edited so that it works with this creation. As even though it carries fewer passengers, it's a lot easier to fly and has a few more bells and whistles than the one that comes with the stock vessel. Trust me, being easier to fly also means it's easier to land, especially on a moving ship, which means fewer headaches when the wind picks up and the sea gets a little choppy. About here should do. I just need to make sure I don't get too close. This helo isn't pressurised and if that ship hits it, it will sink like a lead weight if it crashes into the ocean. There, check that out. Bear in mind that that thing is only going 22 knots right now and not the full 30, and look how quickly it's passing us by. Anyone who thinks that this is slow for a 55 metre offshore patrol vessel has obviously never been on a real ship in their life. Anyway, I'd better land this helo before we get to the bridge that's up ahead, otherwise things could get very interesting indeed. While I'm here, it's also worth mentioning that I've recently updated the USS Ares and Boeing 928 hydrofoils on the Steam Workshop. I've added shallow water anchors to both of them and even found the time to replace the missiles on the USS Ares with some new ones, as sadly the original ones were messed up by a recent patch which changed something with how the 1x1 missile parts work. Thankfully, the new missiles work just as well, if not better than the original ones did on release. So if you've subscribed to either of those, feel free to take the new versions out for a quick spin and let me know your thoughts either on the workshop pages or in the comment section below. Right, now that I've landed, it's time to get this thing tied down again. Ah. 
Ah, safety first. Better fold that tail rotor away and raise those railings again. Ah, what the hell. I may as well fold away the main rotor too. Stops it from being hit by anything, I suppose. I also need to give it just a slight nudge so that it fits back onto those tracks. There we go. In fact, I'm tempted to roll this thing back inside the hangar. How are we looking? All clear? Good. Now, this helo should be light enough that I can just push it into the hangar without needing to use that winch inside. Yep, thought so. I just need to be aware that I'm pushing against the wind caused by this ship moving forward. Perfect. I just need to close those hangar doors now, and we're all done. Good. Time for me to head back on upstairs and make sure everything is still working the way it's supposed to. I may as well turn these off while I'm here. They're not being used by anyone right now, and it'll help improve performance a little. Oh yeah, everything's fine. And we've only used about 2% of our fuel so far, even after all that messing around. Unfortunately, we're still quite far from the bridge, so I may as well just skip time until we get there. So, I'll see you guys all again shortly. As you can see, we're approaching a bridge. Normally, this ship would not be able to fit under it, but I have added another feature to this variant, the ability to lower the mast which you can do simply by pressing this button over here. Unfortunately, because of the shape and size of the mast, it cannot be lowered the full 90 degrees, but it can, however, be dropped down low enough that we can get underneath the bridge, providing the weather is relatively calm. Otherwise, we'd have to find one of those high bridges that the devs added earlier this year. The only problem with them is that they're placed quite far apart and what I can only describe as questionable locations. There we go, now that we've safely passed under the bridge, we can raise the mast again and continue as normal. Excellent. Now that we're coming to the end of our journey, there's only a few more things to go over before we conclude today's video. But first, I need to find somewhere relatively safe to come to a complete halt. I can switch the radar back on again now the mast is back up. Ah, of course, I'd left Zizo's emergency beacon locator running all this time. But hey, at least it's given us a good idea of where it is. It's just a shame we've been going in the opposite direction though. Oh well. Now, one of the issues with the original Condor was its excessive use of fuel. Remember, when we started this video we left the creative base, which is up here to the top right, and we are now down here next to the beginner Coast Guard outpost, which is over 11 and a half kilometers away. And look at this, we've only used about 3.2% of our total fuel. Bearing in mind that the ship has been in endurance or cruise mode for about 99% of the journey. We'd have probably used twice that if we'd stayed in sprint mode going at 30 knots. But it's still a huge improvement over the original. Right, time to go downstairs and check out the changes I've made to the underside airlock and to take a quick look at those water jets before we wrap things up for the evening. Now, it's worth noting that I did have an older modification of this vessel that used two of Karlstrom's 5x5 modular engines, but despite being a lot more powerful, they just took up too much space and didn't quite fit in with the rest of the ship. So I've gone back to using the original large engines. Plus, the simple engines are a lot more performance friendly, and for my now 6 year old computer, that certainly helps.
The main change I've done to this airlock is that I've added another custom door frame within the walls, essentially pressurising it and turning it into a moon pool. What this means is that only the lowest part of the airlock ever fills with water, which makes it a lot faster for any divers that need to enter or leave the vessel using it. And here, ladies and gentlemen, are the water jets, used as the ship's main form of propulsion. As well as having the advantages I mentioned earlier, they stop instantly and don't have any rotating blades. Which means, if you accidentally bang into them while working on the underside of the vessel, you won't get chopped in half and die spectacularly. Which, incidentally, has happened to me in the past when using some of the rescue vessels from the Steam Workshop, where the content creator, in their infinite wisdom, have decided to put the screws right under the boarding ladders. Now here's a good example of how fast the moon pool drains compared to a completely filled airlock. Check this out. Less than 10 seconds later, we can open the inner door and get back inside. Which is absolutely vital when time is of the essence. Well, that concludes my mini showcase of the modified Condor Mark I that I edited for personal use. I hope you enjoyed seeing the changes I made and it inspires some of you out there, as this proves that even a mere hobbyist like myself, with little to no professional experience, and even less in the way of free time, can use the in-game workbench to both create and improve existing creations in the world of Stormworks. But be advised that as I've said throughout this video, the Condor Mark I belongs to Spider. He is the content creator and as such I will not be releasing this on the Steam Workshop or sharing it with anyone else. The only one that can ask me for any modified content that they've seen featured in my videos is the original content creator themselves and trust me, I will be checking to make sure they are genuine. Anyway, that about wraps things up for tonight's video. I would like to conclude by thanking all of my incredible viewers, subscribers and followers out there. I wish you all the very best and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Until then, this is Robertson, signing off.